So next up with these winds, we're going to imagine the same sort of scenario. Here we've still got R6 sitting right there. We've still got the NDB right here. And initially, because we've intercepted this particular track, we have the same heading and the same bearing two station, 129 and 129. So those are both the same. However, this time, as I mentioned, we're going to imagine that we've got a very, very strong wind coming from the north. So there's kind of the, the wind marks here. And in this case here, it's showing, well, maybe not a really strong wind because here it's only about 10 knots. Nevertheless, we have a wind from the left. So if I do my best to keep 129 right there, particularly on my heading, if I do my best to try to keep 129, what I'm going to find is the winds are actually like a boat moving through the current of a river. The winds are going to push me off like this. So if I try to make sure that I'm constantly homing to the station and I do my best to try to keep this needle pointed at the top, what's going to happen is as I fly this, I'm going to constantly end up needing to change my heading to keep that needle up front. And of course, what else I'll notice is this. The bearing pointer is going to go from something like one two nine bearing two station and it's going to slowly move itself backwards as I continue to plunge southwards and start to change my heading. So in the end what I'm going to find is a couple of things. My heading of course is going to change. It's going to go from one two nine and it's going to become less and less and less and less and less and at the same time this bearing pointer here it's also going to end up changing its bearing to station. So let's move over to the simulator now next, and we'll take a look at that and watch how it happens. Well, just one moment, I'll quickly sketch this on here. Just quickly show you exactly the path that the plane is gonna follow. It'll look something like this. It'll start out like this, and then it will get more and more like this, and it will end up curving and coming up like that all due to the fact that we've got winds blowing from that direction. Okay, so let's switch over to the simulator now. There we go, zooming in. So here's our airplane starting up here on a heading of, as we can see, 129. We can see there's our bearing two station of 129 right through there. There's the beacon. As I start out, I can see here that, yeah, my heading is 129, and as I look there, I can see that the pointer is showing 129. There's my heading 129, there's my heading there, 129 as well. Okay, so let's set this airplane in motion. There it goes. Keep going, airplane. So we can see, look at that. Did you, did you see how initially it was on this blue track right there? It was initially on the blue track. And look at this, how it's slowly drifting to the right of the track. Remember, that's because, if I pause this for just a second, remember, that's because I've got the wind blowing. There's the north there. So the wind is blowing from like here. So it's slowly causing my airplane to end up drifting like this, and eventually we're going to end up following a path like that. So wind from right here, and my airplane is moving off the track, and it's going to eventually go like this, and then end up curving like that. So look at here how the pointer now is off by a few degrees. Well, remember I said we're going to try to home towards the station. So what should I do? I guess I need to turn left a little bit to try to put this pointer back on the direction that I'm going. Don't you think that might make sense? Well, let's give that a try and 
see what happens. So off we go again. I'm going to turn left right there. There we go. So now as I look, look, I've done my job. The pointer is right on again. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. But whoa. Just going to zoom in a little bit. Goodness gracious. The, the airplane here, it's the distance from where it is to the original track that I had, it's getting greater and greater and greater. That's not so good. And, and look at this, the, the pointer, well, the pointer, I had it all straight before, it's, it's come off. And, and you remember how originally this pointer here was showing a bearing to the station of right there, which was 129? Well, now look at where it is. It's actually showing something like 110? Hmm. Okay, well, let's keep this going. And I'm just going to turn to the left a little bit to get that pointer back on center. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. Oh goodness, as I get closer and closer to the station, look at that drift. Wow. You can really see the plane as I get closer and closer to the station. You can really see how it just seems to get pushed out faster and faster and faster. Look at how quickly this pointer is going off. I'm nowhere near my original heading of right over here, which was 129, and now I'm heading 100. And, and for that matter, look at how my bearing to station right here now is like 086. This is getting horribly messy with these winds. Let's unpause it. Try to catch. Oh, that's not working. That's not working. Look at that. Look at how quickly that airplane just swooped like this, and now we're ending up going at a very different heading. You can see right now, 060, my approximate heading. Sure, we're going directly to the station, but look at how the bearing to station is now about 055. Remember, it started out at 129. And this was the track that I was supposed to be following, but no longer am I following it. So, when we get winds from the left or from the right, what we're actually going to need to do way out here is instead of flying perfectly 129 when I start out here, I'm actually going to have to move a little bit into the winds. Typically, a good number to start out with is about one half of the crosswind value. So in this case, if we had that 10 knot wind from the left, instead of flying 129, what I maybe should have done was taken about 5 degrees off of that. And if I flew 124, I would find that that would keep me pretty close to right on this track. I'll know whether I'm getting off because this here will move off to the left or to the right, depending on whether I've got too much or too little correction. Okay, well, let's keep this airplane flying for just a few seconds more. We'll watch what happens as we cross that station. Whoa, got it in a big turn. Hang on, wait a minute. Ah, oh, golly, are we in a spin? Oh, whoa, hang on, yikes. Ugh. Okay, quick recovery procedure for a spin. That's exactly what just might happen on your test. I'm, I'm kidding, but don't forget the examiner can ask you how to recover from a spin. And in that case, you can maybe rattle it off, hopefully verbatim, without too much thinking or freezing, just like that. Okay, anyways, all right. <laughs> Let's uh, continue on here. Now I'm going to move on to some outbound tracks. Okay, next outbound track. Give me a minute or two to set this up on the computer here, and then we'll go with that.